fourth one, honey. We got through the winter. <laughs> winter in North Carolina? There's yeah, there like is no, no winter such thing. here. Um, how's your mom? You got a shot today? I got a shingles vaccine. A uh, shingles vaccine. So but, um, both we of are us, fully vaccinated. Mm -hmm. So if you want to invite us over to cook dinner for you, we'd love to go out there and, and visit you wherever you are. Hopefully we can do that pretty soon. That's one of the things we're looking for. Um, tonight, again, like always, we're going to give away a nobody box. And pay attention closely tonight because it's going to be something that Dana and I are going to say that we're going to ask about 10 of you tomorrow. What was it? And then we'll send you a $25 gift card to No Seafood. So how are you? I'm well, thank you. I want to say hi to Paul. Hi, Paul. Paul, hi. we miss you. I just, oh, gosh, I hope next month I can get up to see Paul and our wonderful crew. I haven't seen them since, I think, uh, October. Or, some people, it's amazing. We were talking about no seafood and um, that the company was started during a pandemic mm -hmm. and that the entire company was made up remotely. Like, I have not met a number of the people that are part of our crew and it's it's kind of that weirdest thing right yeah. but we're so connected with the digital platforms so tonight you ready for it we're talking shrimp i've been studying <laughs> she's been <laughs> studying uh we'll have to find out where they come from um but one of the things about shrimp is i would say it's your favorite seafood totally if i make like 10 oh, shrimp yeah. you'll take yeah. you'll take most of them off my plate yeah. When I'm not looking. Are you done with that one? You, you love shrimp, right? I like scallops too, but I do like shrimp. Yeah, shrimp, I think, is one of your favorite. Actually, it's one of the few fish that I could cook very easily. So when you're not at home, I know. I and we're going to talk about that, honey, yeah. because there's been some errors on the stove that we're going to have to bring up. But you're not alone. A lot of people do it. So we're going <laughs> to talk about it. Um, all right, let's talk about shrimp. And by the way, tonight we have a guest here tonight, our neighbor, a friend that we love, Jess. And she's a nurse. Our favorite uh, nurse our is favorite here. Our favorite nurse is here. So if we go down, we got, we got live help. So I don't think she's that's She's my gonna... call a friend. If I can't answer any of the questions, Jess is on deck for uh, right. answering them. All right, shrimp. It is incredibly healthy. Is that why you eat it? Yeah. Okay, why, why is it healthy? Why do you uh, think? Low sugar, no keto, sugar. no keto, sugar. All right. Um, high protein, mm -hmm. doesn't have a really fishy taste because I don't right. love really fishy mm -hmm. fish. Um, easy to cook. I can't screw it up, although it's very, you it's very, keep telling me not to overcook it. Don't overcook it, right. Um, the other thing about shrimp, it is really high in antioxidants, which goes into your wine drinking. By the way, what are you drinking tonight? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm back on the bourbon. <laughs> I'm going what? a little light with a vodka and true lemon. Cheers, honey. Um, if you had wine, that would be the other antioxidant. So Vito just came into the house in case everybody wants to say hi to the big V. He's, uh, he's adjusting to people going to work and going to school, and he's hanging out with me all the time. So, okay, um, here we go. Shrimp is the, probably the number one most popular seafood that we consume in the United States. In fact, we eat about, on average, about four pounds per person in the United States. That's 25% of what people eat for seafood in, the, in a year. So we only eat about 16 pounds of seafood on average. We're not average. But imagine that 25% of the seafood we eat is just this one category. It's shrimp. Um, how many different types of shrimp are there in the world? <laughs> I don't know. Well, guess. Forrest Gump might know. Oh, Forrest Gump. Let me just call a friend. Jess, uh, how Jess, many types how many, of shrimp, if you were to guess? How many types around the world? 15, that's close. What do you think? Um, I'm going to say 21. 21. 2,000. <laughs> you didn't go over, but there's about 2,000 different varieties of Jess, shrimp. Thanks for backing all, me all up. Over, all, <laughs> over, all, all over the world. Um, they really are. I mean, you've got North Carolina shrimp, right? Yeah. You've got brown yeah, shrimp, you've got local right, shrimp. Yeah. Um, you've got black tigers, vanamese, you've got Texas brown shrimp, Patagonia red shrimp, I mean, Ecuadorian shrimp. You've got mangrove shrimp. You know, so there it, it has to do with a lot of the different species of shrimp there are in the world. And also they all taste different because of what they consume. Right. So it was interesting. We got a fish tank and, you know, trying to get rid of the gunk in the fish tank. I went to the fish store to get something to help me. And the guy says, ah, put some shrimp in there. They kind of clean up everything. 
That was enlightening as far mm -hmm. as, you know, what are you, why are we eating shrimp? They're kind of like the lobster. They kind of clean the bottom of the ocean, but they go all the way around and they really purify a lot of the water by, the, you know, what they do. So they're actually really good for the environment. Um, so 25% of the seafood we eat is shrimp. Um, in the world, we produce wild and farmed about 8 billion pounds of shrimp a year. Okay. which is amazing. It's the, you know, you know why it's the number one consumed. 75% um, of it is produced by about two countries. Uh, that would be China and Thailand. Um, India is very good. All over Asia, Vietnam, Indonesia. India is doing an amazing job. But then you can go to you know, Mexican shrimp. You can go to Ecuador, uh, all over the world. Um, the Chinese shrimp, I will not touch, bring, eat at all, just because you just don't know how the processing has been done there. Um, it's actually but Thai a, shrimp here. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm going to them. We're going to talk about that a little bit because there's there's issues with shrimp, right? And one of the issues with shrimp is the use of additives. You know what's in it? How? You know, what do they do to it? And those are the problems that we have with no seafood. With all of our stuff, is we want to make sure that it's sustainable, it's natural, and it's trusted. And so there's a lot of additives they put into shrimp so they can make the shrimp appear bigger and let, you know, be preservatives, and they don't go as old fast, you know, they, and it's not good. Um, mislabeling, a lot of mislabeling that goes on with shrimp around the world, and I hate it. I hate it that it happens, and, you know, we've got to put a stop to it. Feed, what do they feed the shrimp? Do you know? What do they eat? I don't. If, they, if they're farm-raised. So I'm going to draw a blank on that one. Going to draw a blank on that. So a lot of times <laughs> yes. it, it's... Can you it, Google that for it, me? <laughs> it's, it can be plant-based. It also can be fish meal that mm -hmm. they can mix into it. But again, what we do not want to have is any medicines going into the feed, any additives going into the feed. All of our shrimp at no seafood is all natural. Um, it's actually a GMO, non-GMO feed as well. So that was one of the things that we were strong about. We wanted to know exactly what goes into any of our farm-raised shrimp, which right now we're getting from both um, Vietnam and we're also getting it from India. And you know I've been in India 15, 20 times, and it's remarkable what they're doing over there, the technology in bringing up shrimp. One of the issues with shrimp is that a few years ago, a number of years ago, maybe six or seven years ago, they said, okay, let's just put a lot of shrimp in this pond and raise it, and they overpopulated the shrimp, which caused diseases within the shrimp, which had a massive kill off on the shrimp. Well, I think they learned a lesson about doing that. One of the most important things I want to talk about shrimp and the problems with shrimp that's being produced globally is what we call the social aspect of it. A number of years ago, I believe it was 2015 or 2016, it was right around the Christmas time, that they had a problem with, in Thailand, which is known to have this problem, that they were using slave labor. Oh, okay. Remember that? They were using slave labor to peel the shrimp in these peeling sheds. Mm -hmm. And the, I think it was Associated Press was able to expose it. Thank you, Associated Press, because we need to call those things out. So every one of the facilities that we get our no seafood shrimp from, we have to have a social audit from those facilities. We want biometrics that when they check in and they check out, they get paid for uh, a fair wage for the hours they actually do work as well. So hopefully we can talk about these things, be transparent and demand this, whether you buy it from no seafood or not, know what's going on in your shrimp. Make sure you look at the back of that packaging, okay? Because you will see sometimes it will say shrimp, water or shrimp, sodium tripolyphosphates, which when they add that in there, the shrimp will absorb moisture and it will get bigger. And then when you go to cook it, what happens? It all shrinks it up. It all shrinks up. So we just recently had uh, a woman that talked to us and said, hey, I can get shrimp a lot less than what you're paying, you know, you guys have it on no seafood. I said, go ahead. I said, there's a reason why it's less money, a mm -hmm. lot less money. Go and look at the back of the packaging. See what it says on it. Cook it and see how does it shrink. And so size does matter? Size, size matters, okay. okay? So, I oh, that's where you were going. Well, we're, go, we're going there, <laughs> but I want to talk, how old do you think, like, the shrimp is? Oh, this question again. Jess, help me guess. All right, Vito, how old is this? Because you and I together 
<laughs> we'll give an average. How old do I yep. think that shrimp is? How long did it take it from larvae to get to this? 30 days. Not too bad, far off, actually. I'm going to say six weeks. Um, anywhere from nine months to 18 months, okay? <laughs> to, to get to this size. He tries to make it sound like we're <laughs> You were so close. You were so close. Um, Jess, thanks for helping me validate. Like, I'm, I'm really right. just guessing it. So yeah. that, that's pretty interesting. But there are some shrimp. In fact, we were, Paul and I saw one today. It was a black tiger shrimp <laughs> that was one pound. One shrimp, one pound, right? And we were like, wow, that's pretty amazing. Um, but normally it's about an 18 months of age, you know, uh, for them to get to a size like a 20 count or a 30 count, that type of thing. So also, do you know that shrimp talk to each other? I didn't. Because they use those little things oh, and they click, click, okay. click, 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 click. Hey, what are you guys doing? Where are you hanging out? I'm going down to Florida for the winter, you know, <laughs> that, that type of thing. Um, do you know where their heart is, honey? I don't know where their heart is. Oh my gosh. I don't know their love language either. You but. don't know their love I, 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 You don't know their love language? <laughs> we can guess. I will say that their love language is touch. Oh, okay. okay. So their heart is in their head. Okay, okay. That's where the heart is, actually in the head. Okay. That's where everything is in there. So let's talk about size. So you love this, honey, don't you? All right, Zach, you ready? I got to keep my eyes on questions, too. Okay, so let's explain this, because size does matter, right? This is a head-on whole shrimp. Now, this is how it comes out of the water. This is probably about a, an eight to 10 to the pound shrimp coming out of the water. Once it comes out of the water, I say, we gotta get rid of the head. So they took the head off. Now, this is about what we call a 12 count, 12 of these to the pound. Now you can see it has the flippers on and it has the shell on of it. What we do at this point is when we take the shell and the flippers off, we get this. It is now what we call a 15 count. So anytime that you do something to the shrimp, it drops in a size. So when you go to the supermarket and you buy a 2125 or you go to No Seafood and buy a 2125, this has the tail on. If we took the tail off, right, it would be a 2630 count. Now, what happens when you cook it? Same thing. It shrinks down in size once you cook it. Because you have to understand that a shrimp, 80% of its weight is water, is moisture. Mm -hmm. Similar to the scallops, remember we talked about the scallops? Yeah. Same thing happens. So every time you touch a shrimp in a process, it's gonna drop down into a size, okay? So when you look at a 2125 shell on, it's completely different than a 2125 shell off. It's a different size shrimp completely. So what we sell is basically this size. We have a, a 15 count, we have a 2125 count raw, and then we have the 2125 count cooked. Mm -hmm. So size does matter. These will go from being like five to the pound all the way to this is a cold water shrimp. You can see this, it's about 250 count to the pound. And this is wild. Oh my God, that's it? tiny. You wanna try it? It's cooked. Okay, has it touched bacon? No, it hasn't touched any bacon. Okay, we have some questions coming in. Yep. Okay, so. Oh, by the way, if you ask the questions, that's when you have the chance to win the okay. nobody box, right? So Jennifer Bain, Jennifer, thank you for asking. Um, so you check for fair wage and working conditions? Absolutely. For all of the suppliers? A absolutely. Okay. They have to have a social audit submitted before we'll take any of this product in. Wouldn't the wild be better? This, Jennifer asked the same question. Wouldn't the wild be better for the environment? Um, there's not enough wild. Okay, so let's talk about that, because that's a real good question. Here's a wild shrimp. Right? This is actually North Carolina wild shrimp, and shrimp Will, will grow naturally, obviously, in the ocean, and they migrate a lot as well. Depending on the temperature of the water, and you've heard me talk about climate change and ocean temperatures, mm -hmm. well, it happened again this year, is that this is the biggest the shrimp got in North Carolina off the coast this year. These, these are basically a 26 to 30 count. There's nothing bigger. For some reason, they never matured and were able to get to the size. And that's a, a, 
an affect of the mm -hmm. temperature in the water? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. It, it, that affects everything. And they've got to look for feed and temperature. So they'll follow wherever the fill, you know, the feed or the temperature is going to be. Mm -hmm. So wild shrimp, for example, in the United States, um, there is about 240 million pounds of wild shrimp that's harvested. So do the math, right? And that's out of the Gulf of Mexico, that's off this coast, also off the West Coast. And there's really not enough wild for us to actually um, actually eat. So farm shrimp is, it produces, you know, 80% of all the shrimp we consume, probably 85% okay. is, is farm raised. There would never be enough of this. We only now, wild. Okay. the other thing I wanna talk about that is, see this? They used to be able to get these off the coast of Maine. Right? These are cold water shrimp. They're oh. very, very sweet yeah. and everything else. Because of ocean temperatures now, up, 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 there's no more sweet rock shrimp in, in Maine. Yeah. These come out of, off of Greenland. So as the colder water goes, these shrimp are going for the colder water. So these we have are to go further north They have to go to further get... and okay. further and further because yeah. these are migrating away because of the ocean temperatures, which... Okay bothers me a lot. So I've got a few. I'm just going to take these two questions together from, they're both from Ashish. What's the difference between shrimp and prawns? And then is crawfish related to shrimp? So coupling okay. those two together. Thank you, Ashish. Prawns is big in the India. Uh, that's what they'll call the prawns. Yeah. You know, so they'll look at a prawn, that whole, they'll say, oh, those are prawns, because mm -hmm. it the, it's the whole thing. Basically, it, it's an interchange of a description. Okay. Prawns and shrimp, they, they interchange. But prawns in, in India, they'll usually serve prawns as, as a, whole, um, a whole item. Okay, right. got it, thank you. All right. um, is there, uh, Vicki Adams Davis asks, is there any difference with Gulf Coast shrimp? Yeah, they're total different. Um, it's all about where the species is, the temperature of the water, and what's the feed in the water that they're eating. Mm -hmm. So they'll have a different taste. That's why when you get the cold water shrimp, they're sweeter. Okay. They actually taste a little bit sweeter because of what they, what they eat, right? And the, the, the brown shrimp from Texas, which are really delicious, I love them, uh, is very local down there and they consume quite a bit of them. So yeah, all over the world, it all depends what they eat. It's like any type of fish, where they, where they fish, where they swim, what they consume, what they eat is really tasty. Okay, I'm gonna piggyback off that because Lisa Massey, who's one of our Lisa! Brand, one of our brand's ambassadors, Lisa asked, will you ever offer large cold shrimp like the tiny ones? They're not available. Okay. They do not exist. Okay. Um, it's, it's, it's very rare to get them above a 120 count. I, I, can't, I don't even know where, I've never seen them big, unfortunately. Okay. Um, thank you, Lisa, always for your questions and your contributions. Um, we have a question from Frank. Where did my Frank question go? Um, Frank Kirsting wanted to know if shrimp is heart healthy. Hugely which heart healthy. I know healthy. it is. Hugely. Yeah. Seven calories on a 21 25 count is about seven calories. Um, basically, no carbs, no fat. And the antioxidants, you know, the B factor, the proteins, it's incredibly great. I would say the only issue I see with shrimp would be cholesterol. It, it tends to have a little bit more cholesterol yeah. than, than some other stuff. I was actually but reading about that as you I was did? studying. Were you that. studying for I this? I was trying to figure questions he was going to ask about shrimp. Oh, I, didn't oh, get no. the, I didn't get the types, but I did read about the cholesterol. Um, but they say actually saturated fat is worse for your heart than, yes. than cholesterol. So, okay. um, before um, the next question, yeah. I want to show something. So we need a demo. Um, okay. Ready? Can you tell me anything about these shrimp? Are they all the same size? Um, I can tell you that they look, well. It's a trick question. Okay. Are okay. They all so the let me same explain size? it. This was the original size, mm -hmm. okay? This is, is basically a 15 count. I cooked it. Yeah. And then I cooked it overcooked. Okay. People will say, okay, shrimp. Now, all of our shrimp is natural. So here's the big issue, is that do not overcook your shrimp. What will happen when you, how do I know when the shrimp is done? See when it curls in on itself? You've overcooked it. Now this is shrinking because all that moisture <laughs> that was in the meat, you just absolutely cooked it out and it's just compressing on itself and it's, this is actually overcooked. 
this is cooked perfectly. And really, it was like not even a minute aside on this and on about number seven or eight on, on there. So raw, cooked, overcooked. Okay. So when you go to restaurants and they serve you stuff that's really curled on it, they overcooked it. Now, when you go to restaurants, they actually do purchase shrimp that have some additives in it so it stays moist because there's a tendency to always overcook it. Um, it's usually what we call a light soak, but it's still a soak. If you're gonna be using our shrimp, like our scallops, they cook extremely fast. When you see it getting like this, done. Take it off. It's completely finished. See, I was gonna guess that that had bacon in it. Um, no, not okay. yet. Okay, so we have, we have a few more questions. Okay. Um, Dave Lytle, I, I'm just gonna throw this in light and fun. He wants to know what kind of bourbon you're drinking. Um, and Dave, I went with the Breckenridge tonight. Okay. I, it was just, it was the Breck tonight, but because um, um, I'm out of our favorite one. And so if you wish to ship us some, because we can't get it in North Carolina, I would love to have some Blanton ship, please. Okay, so I love seeing the names of people that we know that are, are really vested in the community. Um, it, it's great participation. Uh, Lori Blazer wanted to know what's the best way to remove the vein easily and quickly? Well, when it's in the shell, like in here, it's, it's in there right? When it's in these shrimp over here, they've already been taken out. You can see it's been split. See that, Zach? You can see it's been split. This has actually been done by machine, and they actually pull it out. It's, it's done mechanical. In, the, in these shrimp right here, they haven't been done. So when you cook them, you know, you want to try to remove the vein. But usually on the small ones, there's very, very little that's in there. So all of our shrimp has actually been deveined, peeled Thank you. and that deveined. Was, that, was, that was Ashish's next question. Are okay. all your shrimp already deveined? Um, butter or olive oil, Tina wants to know? Uh, hold on, okay. Butter and olive oil. Butter to, or to cook? olive? No. Okay. This is what we want to use. <coughs> Excuse me. Do -dum, um, do -dum, do -dum, do -dum. Got that, Zach? I am not promoting chosen foods, but avocado oil because Five, it can take high temperatures. 500 degrees. Yeah. Okay, so okay. this is the stuff. Yeah, Don't, the olive oil will burn. So I'd like to get this done and just sear it as fast as I possibly can to get that. Okay. Can we talk about cooking one more time? So before we go on to another question. See the color of these shrimp? Yeah. They're really good. See how nice the color is? Do you know why? Were they dyed? No. <laughs> Oh, okay. Thank God they were. <laughs> thank, I don't know. No. I thought you were going to show us, like, no. you know, See this, shrimp this, with this has the shell, right? Yeah. These shrimp were cooked in their shell. Oh. And then after they cooked, they you removed the, the shell okay. and they deveined them. Oh, okay? okay. So the best tasting cocktail shrimp have been cooked in the shell. That's why oh, it's going to have the flavor okay. and it's going to have the one. color. Now, here's the problem is that what if I want to cook? my shrimp that's already had the shell off. Mm -hmm. Like you want to have it for shrimp cocktail like this. Because this you need to steam, Yeah. right? I don't like boiling seafood. So you can do the boils. If you're going to do the boils, you got to boil with the shell on. Um, but if you're going to take a shell off shrimp that you want to make a shrimp cocktail with, steam it, okay? Same issue, do not let it curl up on itself, right? You're going to be done at that point. But it, this is what I would absolutely, if I was wanted to make shrimp cocktail, get the big shell on ones mm -hmm. and then cook them that way and take the shell off, you're going to have the best tasting shrimp you're ever going to have. Okay. Okay? Mm -hmm. So the best thing to do is absolutely okay. cook them with so the shell So we got a on. few more questions, Dan. Okay. Um, Jess, Jess Rebel wanted to know, What's the good water temperature for wild shrimp to grow? Does the warm water stunt their growth? No, absolutely not. Absolutely not. Think okay. about where shrimp is grown, right? In India, Warmer you know, climates. think about the climates that are yeah. in. So d different okay. breeds of shrimp. Remember we were talking about the 2000 or was it 20? <laughs> 2000. <laughs> of the two I said 21. <laughs> All right, so, so depending where you are in the world, it all depends on the environment that they're in. Right? Okay. So you can go to Patagonia, you can go to Argentina, and you'll have different temps down there as well. So you'll have different, different temperatures, different taste in, in shrimp. Okay, good. Thank you for asking, Jess. Um, will you ever offer rock shrimp? I know this has come up a lot. This, a few people have asked about rock shrimp. I wish, because that's what we, we used to get out of Maine all the time. 
and the stuff was absolutely delicious. Um, we just can't get it. I mean, mm -hmm. it's just not available, unfortunately. You know, growing up in Massachusetts, we used to get Bay scallops. I had 150 lobster pots. Remember I talked about that last time? Yes, I do. Climate change, people, we've got to stop it. We've got to reduce our carbon footprint, you know? And uh, seafood, by the <laughs> way, has the lowest carbon footprint of any protein you're going to eat, period. So. Okay. We're doing our part. I'm going to hold you accountable for that you because betcha. I am I am the most resourceful, hate to waste kind of person. I'm yes, going to throw are. that right back at you. Okay, so my father wants to know if we're going to dance again. I'm going to save that till the end. Thank you, Dad. Mm, Love that. I didn't bring my dancing shoes. Um, and Vito's here too, so he's going to cause a problem on the dance floor. I want to. Uh, we got a few more because I want to just represent like all these great do you, questions. Zach, um, do you see Vito with the way he crosses his legs down there? Isn't he a gentleman? <laughs> Such a sweet doggy. Yeah. Um, Lorraine wanted to know, can you freeze shells and use them later to make a stock? Wow. Absolutely. What an interesting um, question. You know, I don't like refreezing um, seafood, right? If it's thawed, you put it in. But the best thing to do is, why wait? You know, you can, you can build stock. It makes a great stock, just like the lobster bodies as, as well. Lobster, you know, from the... If you've got lobster bodies or lobster shells to make a really good, you know, bisque or a yeah. reduction, absolutely you want to do that. Um, Dan, I think I can answer this. I mean, don't you, doesn't No Seafoods carry North Carolina shrimp or no? Is it coming? Not yet. Okay, Claire, because Claire we, asked that. Because Claire, we've been working with them, um, and actually I got an email from them today that they think maybe June or July they'll get the, st it's very small. and. This is a lot of work. Again, remember, this has the shell on. We take this off. Um, you could use it for a boil, but um, we do have something coming up, though, honey. Okay. I don't think I even talked to you about this yet. Coming soon, we're going to have the fir something first in the world again. Nobody's ever done this before. We're actually another child. Not another <laughs> child. No. So we're done with that. Um, we're actually talking with a a with an organization that is producing the first all vegetarian fed shrimp. Ooh. Okay, all natural, no fish meal. So we do not, it's so sustainable, we're not gonna use any wild type of fish to be used into the feed. And we're gonna be the first to offer it coast to coast in the United States. So coming soon, I'm so excited about this because it's the same, if you guys have eaten our salmon, and you know how, why our salmon is good? is because of the microalgae that has been fed, right? The same company that provides that microalgae for our salmon is doing it for the shrimp. And so we're really excited. That's going to be coming really, really soon. Can I show some of the stuff I made? Yeah, I slate? just want one more. Selinda, yep. if I'm pronouncing Selinda's name correctly. Selinda Lewis wanted to know, what causes the shrimp to be sweeter? Is it the location of the water, as in the case with oysters? Yes. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah, because you alluded um, to that earlier with the Gulf Absolutely. Coast. You know, okay. when you get, um, depends where the shrimp is. I think that the sweeter the shrimp is colder the water. That, that's usually where I think the sweetness of the shrimp really has to do with water temp. Okay. And it's no different than those, those huge lobster tails. They are incredibly sweet. I think they're much more sweet than the, but they're 200 feet down. I mean, mm -hmm. they're, when you get to the real cold water, it's really delicious. And I think it creates an amazing amount of sweetness. Okay, um, now you can do your little demo. I can do my thing, okay. <laughs> and so. then while Dan is getting that ready, I'm going to announce our winner. And I have to, in full disclosure, we have an app that we use. So anyone who poses a question is up to win. The winner tonight happens to be sitting at our counter. So Jess, uh, really? you are the winner tonight. <laughs> really? And it is That's not amazing. fixed. It is not, I don't even think Beth knows this. She said, Jess is the winner, and I'm saying, okay, Jess is sitting right that's, here. That's amazing. It is done through an app, so Jess, thank we you have for no posing idea. questions. Thank you for helping backing me up here. Honey, okay. you want to try one? So these are the shrimp that I marinated in a dill, oh. cilantro, uh, it might have a little bit of sugar in that dressing. Okay. But ease with some pesto on, yeah. a, on a little French bread, right? Okay. A really great summer tasting. Keep this cold and serve it. It is so simple and so easy. Yeah. All right. Next, my favorite from my brother Vito Marcello up in New Hampshire. First time I met my buddy Vito, my brother from another mother. We asked him to make this as an incredible restaurant up in New Hampshire. And Vito Marcello, I love you, Vito. Um, we asked for a bruschetta, but I said, I want you to take some broccoli rabe, 
saute the broccoli raw with some hot peppers, some red peppers, some spices, and then I want you to take some Gouda cheese and then take some shrimp and then bake it. Put it underneath the broiler. This is what we're eating later, crew. This is one of my, one of my favorites. I, th does that look good? That looks Doesn't it look good? Okay, what else? Oh, honey, you're not gonna like this. Oh, the bacon, the bacon. <laughs> so I'm not quiet about this, but I am a pescatarian. I do not eat meat. Well, I do. And I don't <laughs> kiss Dan or Jack after they've had meat, so. <laughs> so I better go in now? <laughs> I know you already have bacon. So, so um, everything's better. I mean, so what I did is I took the U15s. I took a par-cooked bacon, which means it was cooked a little bit. Even if you have raw bacon, just put it in the microwave for about a minute, minute and a half. Kind of get it going a little bit because I don't want to overcook the shrimp. So you tend to cook the bacon and then you overcook the shrimp. So I try to pre-cook the bacon, wrap it, and just put it underneath the broiler, turn it over, and it's done. This is delicious. You going to have one? No, but no. I, and I'm not worried about overcooking the bacon. You're not gonna Go get your son right. to so, see if Jack will come um, and have some. What are we going to have for dinner tonight? So we're going to have, we're going to saute some shrimp, right? I'm going to do some, um, let's see, we're going to saute some shrimp in some butter, some oil, some white wine, some capers, a little bit of lemon, and put it over some pasta. Uh, and that's what dinner is going to be tonight. So shrimp is so versatile. I mean, it's a blast. You know, you can do so much with it, right? I mean, look at this. I mean, play with the shrimp. It's, it's amazing. So that I can eat because it has no bacon in it, right? Nothing. Okay. I mean, and that, that, bro that, that broccoli rob, you know, that's my favorite vegetable, right? Yep. That's why I love broccoli rob. So it's delicious to eat. So shrimp is so easy, so good. Um, you should keep a bag in your freezer all the time, but make sure it's all natural, has no additives. It's not mislabeled, right? It was fed right, and make sure that the people that harvested that shrimp for you are properly taken care of. So, so it should come from no seafood. Absolutely. You know what? I, I hope we educate you with this Facebook Live. Um, it's amazing uh, that this guy, Chris, that introduced us to this, this shrimp that he's working with out of Ecuador, really excited about bringing this in. And I tell you what, once that gets in, that is... There's going to be some free shrimp flying out of no seafood for the people that uh, that love shrimp. So any other questions in closing? No, I think we're good. We're good. We had a good feed. Thank you all for participating okay. and sharing. I don't know what we're Sorry, doing. Sorry, Dad, that we're not dancing no, tonight. Dancer, because Vito is down here. <laughs> yeah, because Vito's and here. You know, you know how Vito is if, like, I tick, start tickling her and stuff. <laughs> He'll stop barking and stuff. So, um, Vito, can you say goodbye? Say goodbye. Go ahead. Vito wants some shrimp? You want a greenie? Oh, yeah, you like a greenie, <laughs> don't you? You want a greenie? Say you don't want some bacon? No, don't say that. You want to eat the that. bacon? All right, till, till next time. Thank, Thank you, you for joining for us. Thank you guys for joining. And um, we love keep this those community. questions going. I know if we didn't answer them all, I'll try to get on them tomorrow. But be prepared tomorrow morning. I think Beth, Savannah, uh, we're going to put a question out there. And Paul, love you, buddy. And I uh, hope to see you really soon. Thank you, everybody. Thanks.